Dragon's Den is open for business. I don't often say this, but your pitch was awful. You've got to be quiet for this little bit, Peter, if that's all right. Ouch. A place where budding entrepreneurs are given a once-in-a-lifetime chance. You have this most bizarre way of answering questions. <laughs> no, 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 stop it. To present their wares to five captains of commerce. You wanted to see how credible we are, yeah. so I'm about to show you. Well, show me. Some will succeed and go on to make millions. <laughs> Others will fail and leave with nothing. Make him a counter offer. Tell him to shove it where the sun doesn't shine. With the occasional visit from some wealthy VIPs... I can't not give you money. I can't not make you an offer. First deal in the day. I didn't want it anyway. The hunt is on to find the next big money-making idea. Dragons are go. <laughs> Tonight. Where's my chocolate? I'm not, I took Peter's away because he was going to make himself sick. I do. Can, I, can we have a break? I do feel a bit queasy. This is really surreal. Ignore him, please. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm getting a bit emotional. You've just got to say I accept your offer. You can check out our Trustpilot reviews. You can see how happy they all are. You've only got five customers, mate. I would just ease off on Trustpilot. You are literally so boring. I couldn't agree less with Peter. Oh, thank God for that. Hi, I'm Jasmine. I'm 37 and I'm from Brighton. I'm super excited today to bring a new concept to the den, um, something that people shop for all the time, but we're giving them a new and fresh way and we hope the dragons are going to love it. The messages of the brand are so simplistic that I don't, I don't think that it's going to be a challenge for them to understand what the brand's all about. Well, that one over there is called Tired, that one's called Sweaty. What do you think it is, Peter? I think it's face cream. Definitely not the one I use. I've been using the same cream for 25 years. 24 years. years. Oh, 25 now. I've forgotten to add the year on. <laughs> Hi, my name's Jasmine and I'm the founder of Face. I'm here today to ask for £60,000 for 3% of our business. We are on a mission to simplify skincare routines as we understand that when you're tired or you've been working out or you're on your period, that whilst you might know you should do a full skincare routine, that actually, in reality, you might not have the time or the energy and that's what we're there for. I've worked in beauty for the last 16 years, but when I decided to create something meaningful for myself, I'd just become a new mum. And when some nights brushing my teeth even got bumped off the list due to sheer exhaustion, I realised that what was out there and what I was doing previously in my routine wasn't speaking to me as a time-poor, tired mum. Also at that time, I worked in an all-female office and we were period-obsessed. Obsessed with how we'd all be in sync, how it would impact our skin. So we've created a range of really easy to use and understand products that directly target our skin problems and can be applied with minimum fuss. Fast forward three years and we had no idea that we would be stocked in major retailers, featured by countless press publications and multi-award winning. I would love to give you some products to try. A line of skincare products for problems ranging from perspiration to periods is the offering from Jasmine Wick Stevens. So yeah, in your bags you'll find um, our hero products. So periods and menopause, and then stress face, dull face, um, tired face and sweaty face are our gender neutral products. Jasmine is seeking 60,000 pounds in return for a 3% share in her business. The scent is amazing. Oh, thank you. And as ever, Peter Jones has a nose for a product which could capitalise on a current zeitgeist. Jasmine, this is very topical at the moment, particularly on the menopause side, because even at home, I've got, I've got Davina McCall's book, yeah. Menopause, um, and it was enlightening for me to, yeah. to recognise what actually happens. Yeah, well, lots of things. Obviously, there's loads of bodily changes, but if we focus specifically on the skin, it might be, for example, you're getting spots again for the first time since your teenage years, but then also you're going to be getting super, super, like, intense dryness. So we've considered that in terms of all the actives that we've included within the product. And does your product really counter it? And then secondly, are there other products that, 
that you're competing against in that space? Yeah, I think our tone of voice is, is all about being real and realistic. We will never overclaim and overpromise. You know, there's only so much skincare product can do on a surface level, and we're really, really real about that. So I think we're trying to be refreshing in that approach that, you know, yes, it will help you, but we're also not going to claim to give you a complete transformation because that would be untrue. Obviously, we've, we've recognised skincare saturated. There are other menopause brands, but you know we are ticking boxes in that you know we're founder-led, we're independent, we're ticking kind of some of the more eco-conscious boxes. We, you know, it's just hard to get that message across with a sort of a product like that, isn't it? Jasmine, so when did you get started? So we launched in 2020. Mm -hmm. And how did that first year go? Yeah, so in the first year, we did 68K in mm -hmm. revenue, minus 98K net profit. And then we did 140,000, um, minus 152K net. And then this year so far, we've done 69,000 revenue and minus 48K net profit. Where's all this money coming from that you're losing? Yeah, so we won an investment competition, which was our first chunk of investment, mm -hmm. 185k. Yeah. Um, then following that, we raised another 100k through an angel, um, and then we also did a crowdfund. So we've raised 450,000 pounds today. So in terms of the shares that I now have left, yes, that's um, going to be next. Yeah, question. it's um, uh, 40 percent of the business. So you still have 40 percent of the yeah. business. And what will the business be, do you envisage, by the end of this year, sorry? So Around 250k. So we're going to get from the 69 to the 250. Yeah. That's so a that, good step this year. Yeah, exactly. So it sounds like a leap, but actually, um, so we're just about to launch onto QVC. We're launching into Urban Outfitters this year as well, so we're going into a few of their key main stores, and that's like all a, a signed deal. And the plan is to actually launch into a Target or a Walmart or an and kind of nationwide boots um, op opportunity. I mean, it's a great story, but then the numbers on paper just look scary. Jasmine, you know when deals come into the den, they kind of fit into a series of different categories. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have lifeline deals, mm -hmm. where the founder comes in and says, listen, I'll give you a big percentage of my business because I realise we need a lifeline here. Um, and then you have the, you know, the swagger, where founders come in super confident, their numbers are kicking it out of the park. Mm -hmm. Often we have to pitch to them. You're asking for 60K for th 3%. Your valuation is giving me swagger, okay. but your business profile, when I look at the financials, is giving me lifeline. Okay. There's a mismatch here. Okay. C can, you give me, can you give me a reason to invest? Because when I look at the, the numbers here, everything's saying no. Um, so we're valuing the business at two mil, based on the traction that we've achieved since our last raise and the things that are kind of coming up. You know, we've got retailer interest, we've had press interest, we've had customer interest. What I've kind of, what I've done today has been about me and my experience, and that's kind of it. We just haven't had the platform and the expertise, but the dream is for this to become a global brand. So, everything you've done is really good. Mm -hmm. I think you're brilliant, I really do, and my overarching concern is I think you're going to be left with almost diddly squat because you're definitely going to need more money if you want to have a chance in this marketplace. Mm -hmm. And my concern there is that you only have 40% of your own company left before you pitch. How does that make you feel that you could end up with, for this to be successful, with only 5 6% of your own company in time to come? Um, genuinely, this started off as a passion project. We didn't have the lens initially of like, we need to make X amount of money. So for me, success looks like this brand being successful and me achieving my goals of actually seeing it in the spaces and the places that I want to see it. I do a lot of mentoring every week. I have a call with someone where I give them my time and share experiences in terms of like my beauty background. And so like, whilst I give them my time, I can't give them anything financially. So, sorry, I'm getting a bit emotional. My like dream would be up to like, pay it forward and, and do that for other people. What's made you emotional then? I don't know, just because I feel so passionate about this and it's so overwhelming to be here in a positive way. And I'm just a crier. If I'm excited or I'm stressed or anything, 
that's the emotion that comes out. No, listen, you're talking to a guy who used to watch Lassie and cry his eyes out, so I get it. <laughs> what is your beauty background? You talked about your referred to beauty background, so what, just talk about your history a bit. Yeah, I've worked in beauty communications all my career since leaving uni. Um, so I've helped countless brands kind of launch into different markets, tell their stories. Um, and yeah, just had the opportunity to work with lots of brilliant people within the beauty industry. And we just thought it'd be really exciting to see if we could come up with something fresh and new. So it us. sounds like you just love your community. That's why you got emotional. You love your community. You yeah. love your business. You're passionate about it. I think you've done a lovely job on the branding. I think your voice is bang on. Thank you. However, you have got a very high valuation. So I would normally say, I know what I think it's worth. Okay. And I'll make you an offer, but I'll make you an offer based on what I, I believe this business is worth. Mm -hmm. I'm struggling because of something, and Peter's absolutely right. You've already given away a lot of your business. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I want to do is get involved in a business with somebody who gets to the point where they're just demotivated. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid you've structured yourself in a way that means I just think you'd be too far diluted. But I love so much about what you've done. But I'm afraid I can't invest. I'm out. I think I have also made a mistake when I told you what my um, equity is left. I think I'm near a 50%, but I didn't want to inter interrupt you. You should have stopped me before I went out anyway, because that does change the picture. Jasmine, mm -hmm. I think the product looks fantastic. I mean, honestly, I would give that a solid nine and a half out of ten. Thank you. However, my concern is it hasn't translated into sales. And as I sit and look at it, I just can't see in any way, shape or form how I could possibly invest. So I'm going to say thank you for the offer, fantastic job on this, but I won't be investing today, so I'm out. J Jasmine, I've sat here um, whacking this ball against my head, to be honest, because I really love what you've done with the brand. But the numbers are just a horror show, you know? They... Ri they... When I see those numbers, I think, Steve, you... Yeah. But when I look at you, I see a lot of potential. And so I am going to make you an offer. And I think when I reflect on the amount of work that needs to be done here, I'd love to go on this journey, not just with you, but with one of my fellow dragons. So I'm going to offer you I'm going to offer you half the money for 7.5% of the business. OK, thank you. Wow. I, I have to say, I think that's a pretty fair offer from Stephen. Because um, that would still mean that you'd be left with 35% of the business. I think the products you've put together the sense really got me, actually. I, thought, I think you've done, a really, you've done it really nicely, and I think you've got something. So I, I'd be willing to go on that journey and match Stephen's offer and offer you half the money for 7.5% as well. OK, thank you. Whoa, I'm left. <laughs> you know, I've heard so much today from you. And, it, and, it, and you, the story's good. You know, you've created some great products. So, I would offer you a third of the money for £20,000. Mm -hmm. That's 5% for £20,000. If the two agreed, we'd have three dragons, each one doing their own little bit to help you. This is like three musketeer territory. Ultimately, we'd have 5% each of the company yeah. for £20,000 each. Yeah. Or if you're saying no to that, I think we still want it, so it's whatever you want. Um, 
I would absolutely love to accept the offer of all three of you. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. How are you, you Kay? So well done. Thank well done. you so much. Well done. Yeah, well done. Thank you so much. Well done. Well done. I'm, I'm so happy. Great. Lovely to well meet done. you. Well done. Bye. It wasn't looking good for the beauty entrepreneur, but Jasmine departs the den with £60,000 and a trio of new investors, leaving one dragon to rue an opportunity missed. Do you know, I would have done that deal. I went out based on the fact she only had 40%. She right. should have stopped me. There's anyway. something really special there, and I think with a bit there of focus... It is. She's great. She's, she's good. She's a star. And you really three will cr kill it. That was just the most amazing and kind of also awful experience ever. It's just a roller coaster in there. Definitely at times I felt like an offer was going to be out of the question. So to have like three individuals like them, sorry, to bring like their skill set as well, which is exciting. How are you feeling, bud? Hi, my name's Gemma. We're going to meet all of these people today. And should we tell them about my crazy little idea? Hey. So I came up with this crazy creation for dogs, and I'm here today to pitch it to the dragons just to see if they love it as much as I do. Cards your dog can eat? I didn't know the uh, dog eating the cards was that big of an issue. We've got two new puppies and they eat everything. I am feeling so nervous. I've wanted to be sick all day. Come on then. But I'm here, I'm doing it. There's no turning back now. Dragons. I'm Gemma from Scoff Paper and we make the cards your dog can eat. Today I'm here looking for a £50,000 investment for a 10% equity of my business. Together with my small team we make edible cards from potatoes. The inspiration for Scoff Paper came from little legends like Leo here. Ten years ago I was working in a highly stressful job, I had a heart attack, and now I've got a pacemaker that I call Jerry. In order to recover, I started to volunteer for guide dogs. So I am what they call a puppy raiser. I am that crazy dog lover, I throw lots of parties. <laughs> it was at one such party that one of the doggy guests tried to eat one of the paper birthday cards. Hey presto! The idea was born. I started the business in December 2020 from my kitchen table. And now we have our own manufacture facility in Lancashire that we call the Scoffis. I predominantly sold the cards direct to the pet trade. So the cards are in lots of lovely independent pet specialists and also the likes of Pets at Home amongst others. So Leo's going to leave me now to let me do the hard work um, and then I can share with you the samples that you've got in your special boxes. Goodbye, Leo. Leo. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Come on, then. Despite the nerves, Gemma Connolly gets through her pitch. Thank you. She's seeking a £50,000 investment. Oh, Carol in return for 10% of her business, which makes edible greeting cards for canines... Can you eat the envelope? Not yet. Try. <laughs> ..that are also proving irresistible to dragons. Dog owner Stephen Bartlett wants to find out more about the entrepreneur. Gemma, sounds like you've been on quite a journey personally. Yes. How are you doing today? Absolutely fine, thank you for asking, yeah. I think it's um, particularly inspiring that you've taken that incident, you've turned it towards something that you love, which is dogs, which we all love, and you've built a business out of it. That's incredible. 
so um, sales to date, you started December 2020. Yes. So let's that's just right. look at 2021 and 2022. Could you give me yeah. the revenue, the gross profit, and the net profit on those years? Yeah, sure. So um, year two, we did um, 121,000 and we had a net profit of 25,000. Year three to date, we've done 55 and a net loss of 22. A net loss of 22? Yes. But we do have a healthy pipeline um, to end the year, which... What are you forecasting? Yep, so I'm forecasting 136,000 and a net of circa 18. 18. How does it... How do you see this becoming a really big business? Just give me the couple of steps that this goes from making 130K this year yeah. to making maybe two or three, four million in the foreseeable yep. future. What, what are those steps? Yeah, so we see those steps being um, supported by D2C growth. What percentage of your sales are D2C, direct to consumer? Yeah, at the moment, 5%. Oh, really? Yes. Wow, that's surprising. Because I would think this business would be 95% D2C driven by social media, watching dogs all over the world eat cards. Yeah. Which is kind of somewhat compelling as, a, as content. Yeah, absolutely. And we do have um, lovely user-generated content. But Gemma, you talked about you, you, you've got some really interesting pipeline stuff. Obviously, the consumer, that's exciting because yeah. it's tiny at the moment. It could be huge. Exactly. But what are the big accounts that you've got? I think you've mentioned some yeah. quite big household names. Yeah, so, so we're, working, um, we're working with uh, Pets at Home. We've done um, circa 15,000 cards with Across them. how many stores? 200 stores. And we did a trial in 50 Pets Corner stores just before Christmas. Um, they're rolling that out to 150 of their stores imminently. We've also got a purchase order to go into 1,022 Aldi stores for one of their upcoming pet events. And how much, let's talk through it, what does that actually mean in terms of revenue? Um, £30,000. £30,000. So this is exciting for you, Gemma. Um, <laughs> I don't stop thinking about it. <laughs> so what money did you have to get this off the ground? Did you have any investment to get started? Was it savings or what? Um, no, as a simple answer, I basically leaned upon my expertise and my knowledge and being able to pick up the phone to somebody and sell the product and get, hopefully get them to buy into me as well. So you have driven the relationships and the contracts that you've got with all of those big retailers that you talked about? Yeah, I've done it all direct. That is, yeah. that for a business at this stage in its life, that is outstanding. You should Thank be you. really proud. Thank you so much. Tuga's in the pet business. She's very quiet there and pensive. What? Well, you've been in the pet industry. I thought you would have had a, a lot of thoughts on this. Look, look, if I have to be totally honest, I love what you do, right? I've got reservations. Yep. And the fact is, a dog only has one birthday a year. Yeah. You know, so if you're buying a treat for your dog, you're probably going for X packets a year. In, the, in this case, you've got to keep on reinventing yourself yeah. every month. So in terms of believing that it's only a, a once a year product, yep. we also sell cards for Valentine's. For Easter, <laughs> oh, it gets worse. Easter, <laughs> Christmas. We sell Get Well Soon cards, and we we are selling these cards all year round at the scale I've talked about, but we are selling okay, on Gemma, our Okay, Sorry. You've convinced everybody, I think, that you can sell. OK. That is for sure. One last question for me before I think. Could you make proper treats, rather than having occasional cards, that you could sell on a regular basis to that same dog? So, in terms of existing technology, we can do a lot of products that are flat. Flat, because, right. Yeah, okay. so that's, that's the machinery I currently have. But is, it, is this a treat? I wouldn't describe this as a treat. I've just eaten it. It wasn't a treat for me. OK. I give my dogs treats every night. The taste is there for the dog. Yeah. But when the dog eats this card... Yeah. I don't know what they're going to get from that. Yeah, so it is uh, naturally flavoured, so we do bacon, Let's chicken. be honest, though. It's, it's a not a treat, treat It's a treat for the owner. Yeah. It's more for the it, owner than it is for the dog. Absolutely. Yeah. It's for the owner who well. can post on social media yeah. and say, look what I did, I got my dog a card. 
yeah. and he can eat it. That's the whole it's crux like of the business. Ultra humanized product. Do you know what? I can completely see the incentive to buy. I mean, your sales track record already shows that there is demand there. You do need to pour fuel onto that fire to really make it a big business. But with your passion, with your energy, I actually think you'll get there. However, I just don't know if I'm as barking mad as you are about selling edible doggy birthday cards. And I think that's really important. I absolutely love dogs, but I'm not one of those dog owners that does all the kind of like novelty social media -y bits. So I, as much as I, I know that those people exist out there and I think you're gonna create a really great business, I just don't know whether I'm the right investor for you because I don't think I'm gonna be so crazy about building this business with you. So I'm gonna say that I'm out. Thank you, thank you. Gemma. Um, right. Um, so I think you have got a good business here, without a doubt. But I think it's novelty. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure I can envisage a future where that finds its space permanently in the store because none of the numbers you've talked about, are, 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 they haven't, I call it lighting up. Okay. You know, you put it there and it lights up. Yeah. You know, and, and, and none of the numbers you've done have said that. So I'm afraid, Gemma, I won't be investing. I'm out. No problem, thank you so much. Gemma, I'm sitting here trying to think, where do you go next? My instinct tells me to keep this business exactly where it's at and build this out with those partnerships to see how far this can go. Because if you've got the likes of Aldi, Pets Corner, you've got all these big players, you could have a really nice, really nice business. Yeah. And if you get away with a business that just is going to turn over a few hundred thousand a year, which I think you're going to do potentially here, mm. it's going to produce a nice income for you, but the room for an investor is tiny. So I'm going to say that I'm out, but I don't want to take anything away from that enthusiasm. And I think because of you, you'll make it a success. So good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> it's interesting. You've got a margin. Yes. And it looks like you've got a very strong retail business. Yeah. And you, you want to go direct to consumer. Yeah. Which um, is a different ball game. Absolutely. Cost of acquisition, you need a team. Yeah. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I want to know more. So I'm going to give you a little lifeline. I'm willing to give you half the money. That's £25,000. But I want 15%. I'm assuming another dragon will want 15%. Thank you so much. That's really kind. Thank you. Gemma. Hey. Race. I'm not a dog owner. I'm the only one I here that's not a dog it, owner, yeah. but it doesn't mean mm. I can't appreciate the commerciality of it. Yeah. And um, I think you've done a fantastic job. I think you've got a great business, and I think you've done a brilliant job of your pitch. Thank you so much. So I'm also going to make you an offer. I would give you all of the money, all 50,000, for 25% of the business, with a reduction to 20% after, okay. if I get my money returned within the 12 months, that will go down to 20%. Be partners at that. Wow. Gemma, I'll just make it perfectly clear. Um, you got a good offer from Sarah, which she offered you all of the money. I'm not. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm very willing to share it with Sarah if she feels that she needs some help in the um, retail world. I'm very close to a couple of big supermarkets. Yeah. Sorry, what are you saying? I'm just waiting to see what she thinks. Someone to share? Would you be open to sharing the investment with Tuka? Um, I've got a lot of investments with Tuga, and we work brilliantly well together. Yeah. And um, Tuga's right, he's got a lot of ins with a lot of retailers. However, that's the bit that you're absolutely nailing. Yeah. So, I, I, don't, I don't think that's something that you need. Um, so on that basis, I think I would say my offer stands as it is for all the money. Thank you so much. 
this is really surreal. I'm sorry. Well, I'll put my money elsewhere. You've just got to say I accept your offer. If you accept it. You've put the words in my mouth. Of course I do. Woo! Fabulous. That is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, congratulations. Oh, Woo. Thank you dog. so much. Well done. Thank well you. deserved. Jubilation for Gemma. Who leaves the den with not only the £50,000 investment she was seeking, Hi. but also the backing and validation of a dragon. What has just happened? I, me, Gemma, got investment from a dragon. <laughs> Sorry, well do you know done. what? Well Bad done. Business. I think her yeah. character and demeanour yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. Well, I looked at her and I thought, do you know what? I'm going to really enjoy working with you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. She said she was like, she she believed in me and like wanted to back me. So, yeah, proud, so proud. <laughs>
let's assume that I wasn't privileged enough to have a charger and I wanted to install this. Let's say that I've got a, a three metre run. Well, from the front of your house to the paper? Yeah, let's assume. To, to the curb. So yeah. a three metre run of your um, contraption. What does that cost? Fitted, that's going to cost you... Uh, it's, it's, it's $9.99, including VAT, the consumer price. So do you think that after people have paid a fortune for an electric car, they're going to be thinking about spending a £1,000 on a little three metre run? Well, put it another way, people who have said they don't want an EV hmm. unless they can charge at home. So we've got a uh, list of signed up users who've seen the price and said, yes, I want this. But it's quite fixed in its location, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. If this is required and you've got a street full of electric cars, you'd need this all the way down the street. Well, that's the nice thing with the sharing app. You can just use one of your neighbour's houses for a few extra pence per kilowatt hour. Yeah, but you then got to coordinate with a neighbour at what point are you going to charge. I want to charge now. We could end up having, like, street fights over who's charging mm. their cars. I want to charge. No, 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 I'm, I'm just going to take it out. Well, the, the, the app says when the charges are available, so you don't need to speak to the neighbours. You look on the app, see that it's available and go and charge immediately. Well, if my car's on the street and I see that plugged in, the first thing I'm going to do is unplug it and put it in mine. You can't. Uh, yeah, you, it's, it's locked in when you're charging, and you can only you activate can't. the charge. You can only do it by your ignition. But what happens if I've got that, I've paid for that, but I've come home at night and I've had to park 700 yards down the road and I've got Mr Noddy, who's just plugged in? <laughs> well, Mr Noddy wouldn't be able to plug you in, so um, if you don't want anyone else to be using your charger, you just turn that off in the app. And but... what happens then? Do I have to get a longer cable to go all the way down the street? You don't need to be... Lo but you can basically park one up, uh, straight outside, one down and one up. So when you drive home at night, um, you often won't need to charge straight away, and you'll wait for one of the three spaces outside your home to become available and then move over. That's, I think that's a major, major flaw in this. And I just don't see the bigger opportunity here. Um, so I couldn't agree less with Peter because I think you've got a ready group of people who are desperate to solve this problem to help their revenue. Local authorities have an impending massive problem that is going to cost them a fortune unless they find themselves a very cost-effective way of dealing this driving issue. And there is a lot of cash around for solving these problems. You have a legislative drive. You have a lot of cash available. You've got a perfect storm. The only question for me is, is this the answer? So, your local authorities, what is the most information that you've got in terms of your trials? Sure. So, it's Milton Keynes City Council. Um, we went live there in February. We have five installations in the ground. So, the information that we've gained, gathered so far is that the, the residents that have got it love it. One person has got a hybrid petrol and he now consumes 65 litres less of petrol a week. You can check out our Trustpilot reviews, you can see how happy they all are. They... You've only got five customers, mate. I would just ease <laughs> off on the... You can check out with Trustpilot. Sure, but we have got five, you know, it's still independent reviews, but I, I, get, I totally take your point, Sarah. Now... I, I get... To me, it's the council piece... Yeah. ..that is the, is the yeah. biggest barrier. You can forget the whole thing if local authorities and highways are not right. going to let you do it, so talk me through what that looks like. So, one of the exciting things with the councils is they've looked at this and gone, oh, thank God for that, you know, finally something that's really quick to install, isn't going deep and can deal with all the wobbly, wibbly pavements of different sorts. Well, they loved it so much to the, to the extent that you just described, Ben, and yet they ordered five. I get that. You're on a trial. a trial. They're going to want to know how long does it last, does it settle, has it caused any trip hazards? I completely get that. Mike, Ben, um, so when I break this pitch down into its core components, um, I see so many things that I think are incredibly investable. And then I see a, a problem that will be solved inevitably in one way or the other. And then the question becomes, is this the, that's the solution to the problem? And now I don't know. And usually in this situation where I don't know, there's enough sort of business data to validate your hypothesis either way. In this situation, you have five customers. So it really comes back to my own beliefs. Um, and I don't know. 
because I've not experienced this problem personally, so I've not developed my own sort of thesis on how it will be solved. Um, so I'm going to say that I'm out. So electric vehicles is the hottest topic yeah. when it comes to environmental issues. One of the barriers, the biggest barrier is range anxiety. The next barrier is where do I charge at night? You know, so, so this is solving an issue and you have very little competition. Um, what I can bring to you is contacts beyond anything I'm sure you have hoped for. So I'm going to make you an offer, guys. Oh, this is brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And I'm going to offer you all of the money. But I want 7.5% of the business. Um, thank you, Deborah. We'll, we'll, we'll go and have a chat about no, that. Well, no, no, okay. talk to but the rest of the dragons. No, but we'd love to see if any other dragons... No, are guys... Peter, um... I think you're definitely interested by what you said so far. <laughs> <laughs> you might have read the room wrong. No. <laughs> guys, I, I, I am I'm beyond shocked. Um, so, <laughs> nothing surprises me in here. But I just find this incredible that we're even having a conversation about something that is averagely innovative, a tube underground with a self-sealing clip on the top that's going to hide a cable across a pathway. Um, I think you have so far to go. And you've got an offer which I think is mad. I'm going to say there's no interest from me and I'm out. Now he's out, we don't have to listen to him yeah. rabbit on about how he doesn't like the idea anymore. I'll tell you where I'm at, guys. I think this is a brilliant product. I think you are, as Deborah said, right in the middle of a perfect storm. Listening to what you are doing and what you need help with, in all honesty, I just don't think I am the right fit for you. Yeah. And I think you've got one fantastic offer. The only bit of advice I want to give you is do not screw this up. Not this business, this negotiation. Because this here could be absolutely massive and you are going to need all the help you can get to do this. So don't mess this up. Good luck with it, but I'm out. Thanks, Thank you Sarah. very much. Guys, there will be certain um, properties that this would be fantastic for. And, and, and I'm exploring all the avenues of how this could work. Look, I'm going to make you an offer. Great. So I'm going to make you the same offer and offer you the whole 50,000 for 7.5%. Thank you, Tuka. Thank you. Do you want to go to the wall and... Yes, thank you, Peter. ...have a chat? Good You've got two great offers. Thank you. Let's go. Deborah Meaden and Tuka Suleiman have both offered £50,000 in exchange for 7.5% of Mike and Ben's business. Would you take, would you take six if you went six? Because yeah. that's... Push five. Are the duo poised to risk everything by seeking more favourable terms? Right. Um, well, we're delighted to get two offers. Um, Tuka, our, our feeling respectfully is that Deborah's the, the dragon we'd, we'd love to have on board. Fine. OK. Um, but thank you. Um, Deborah, we would love to work with you. And we can't take 7.5% or give 7.5%. And the reason is that um, investors uh, have already invested at uh, a 1 million valuation, which would be 5%. So that 7.5% would push the valuation quite, quite significantly below what they invested at. So we can definitely go to 5% uh, and, and, and then we can start working together. So this is what I would say. If you get me involved, the value of your investor's investment is going to increase almost immediately. So I think I'm worth more than your initial investors, honestly. But I also don't want to enter a partnership where everybody's feeling grit under the eye. So I will move a bit, but it is a bit. I would do a deal with you at... 6%. Um.
we'd be absolutely delighted well, to start well, a relationship. So would I. Oh, <laughs> Excellent. Uh, no, oh, I'm sorry, we yeah. hug. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah. Brilliant. Well oh. done, you guys. I'm very pleased, and I hope, well, I'm sure this is the answer. Well done for not screwing it up as well. Yeah, yeah, that was good yes. advice. Delight for Mike and Ben, who depart the den with £50,000 and the backing of a dragon whose green credentials could turbocharge their business. Hey. Ah. The momentum this will give us is huge. He's going to celebrate by putting another turbocharged insulation in the ground, um, which is, you know, another, it brings joy. Another three. Yeah, another three. Yeah. I'm flabbergasted. You offered in an underground cable track. Yes, I yes, did. Yes, you did, and you are yep. super excited about it. I am. Honestly. I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, on to the next install tomorrow. Yeah, indeed. I'm Maria, I'm from Essex, and I have put the nation's two favourite snacks together. Oh, hey, there's some samples down the bottom. What are they? What are they? What are they? It looks chocolate. Yeah, it's me. chocolate. Now we are talking. What's the potatoes? You're not going to get chocolate. Well, you're going to get crisps. The two of my favourite things. Imagine those in a sandwich. When I first started making the product, people thought I was either a genius or a little bit bonkers. I'm hoping the dragons will really understand what I'm trying to achieve when they hear my pitch, and then I think when they taste it, they'll really get it. Hi, Dragons. My name is Maria, and I'm looking for an investment of £50,000 in return for 20% of my business. I am a proud chocoholic, but to be really honest, over the last few years, I've been a little bit bored of what's available on the market. It just seems to be the same flavours redone. Salted caramel, chocolate orange and chocolate mint. The bar of crisps is the new exciting chocolate bar that has actually got people talking. I myself have been eating crisps and chocolate since I was a young girl. In lockdown, whilst eating this incredible combination and binge watching box sets, I thought surely someone has made this into a chocolate bar before. After some online research, I found that there was nothing available, so I created the Bar of Crisps. The Bar of Crisps is a milk chocolate bar stuffed with crisps, available in three flavours, ready salted, salt and vinegar, and cheese and onion. The cheese and onion does spark controversy, but it just means that people are talking about the product. This is genius. Finally, someone has made this a product. I've been eating crisps and chocolate my whole life, and people always thought I was weird. This is just a handful of comments that I get into my inbox on a daily basis. To date, I have sold just over 8,000 bars since launching in January 22. It is stocked in independent stockists up and down the UK, but I also think it has maybe even more potential when it comes to hospitality, the travel industry and the gifting market. I'm going to hand you out some samples. Oh, and thank I God for that. I was going to say, hurry up, we want the samples. Your questions. <laughs> Let's go. Chocolate bars with a variety of different flavoured potato crisp fillings are the proposition from Maria Antonia. Thank you Thank so you. much. Bloody brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so different, isn't it? Oh, it's cracking. Normally, you're putting one crisp in there and a chocolate in there. Yeah. <laughs> now you've got it. Maria is seeking £50,000 in return for a 20% share in her distinctive confectionery business. Tara Mother has been doing this for years. It's such a Moorish combination. This unique coming together of sweet and savoury may already be familiar to Peter Jones. You guys haven't lived. <laughs> but Maria appears to have won a brand new convert to the joys of combining crisps and chocolate in the form of Sarah Davies. Do you know what? I was terrified before you came in because I thought you were going to be chocolate flavoured crisps. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going I, I saw the chocolate and I thought, oh no, it's chocolate flavoured crisps. <laughs> it's going to be a disaster. No, I'm not that bonkers. <laughs> it's anything but a disaster. I'm loving it. Oh, good. He's looking for crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind you, eh? <laughs> I'm serious about this. <laughs> I can see by I the can't look on his face. 
Well, so Maria, I'm going to do you a favour. Yes. I'm going to keep you talking long enough for him to eat most of the okay. bars, and then it should be an easy shoe on okay. to get you an investment, to be honest. We're fighting over it. Right, so walk me through the figures so I can okay. get an understanding. So from 2021, um, turnover was um, 22,000 and a net of four and a half thousand. Mm -hmm. In 2022, turnover was 19 and a net of minus 480 pounds. And year ending 23, turnover was just under 40K and a net of 1,500. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Who absolutely cares about these numbers? This is about the future of chocolate, oh. not the past. Yeah, I agree. I, agree. I, I don't know what you've done. I have yeah. never seen Mr Jones like this. Oh, my God. <laughs> this won't be, but just pause a minute. I've got... got you've you got to try this. You've got the right... Should I go? Try that. How weird is that? That's cheese and onion. I've never seen him like it. Don't know you done, Maria. Hello. <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, okay. Carry on. So, would you say it's a kitchen table set up at the moment, or are you okay. having these made professionally? Love so, it. Uh, so, the bars you're eating today have been manufactured in the UK, but I am changing manufacturer just because I need to get the price point lower. Currently, it, yep. it costs £1.85 to make, yep. and it retails at £4.99. But the new manufacturer... Mm -hmm. We'll be making them for one pound seventeen. Oh, it's quite a difference. Then. Yeah. So, what do you th are you going to just take the extra margin, or are you going to pass that on to the customer? I want to pass it on to the customer because I believe that the price point is too high where it is. I do. So because I as, we... as much as this is genius, I could literally sit and eat a bar of chocolate and a packet of crisps at the same time. Yeah. For half the price. Yeah. Has anyone seen Matilda? Do you know that boy from Matilda that eats all the chocolate? Oh. I feel like I'm sat next to him. Honestly, I've actually gone quite... A... I've got, like, chocolate sweats. <laughs> well, I think you've eaten it in record time. I know. <laughs> I don't really get it. I don't really get it. You, you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really get... I, I mean, the chocolate was OK. Um, putting the crisps in there was slightly weird. It's not... I mean, it's not this. It's you, not. You are literally so boring. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, when people have a reaction like that, after they persevere... Persevere? <laughs> they they persevere. If I persevere, I turn into that. They fall in love with it and they but become addicted. <laughs> He's going to throw he, up. He needs I don't it. be addicted. <laughs> but can I just buy normal chocolate and just a bag of crisps if I really had such a passion to have them you both can, at the same time? But this is so unique and so interesting that people, people love it. Maria, I'm the most important person in the room right now because I'm the one that loves it. Thank you. Generally. I'm, I'm, I couldn't disagree more, Stephen, because, weirdly, I get it. You don't have to go out and buy your packet of crisps and go and buy your chocolate. You've just got it in one. It's like when you have chocolate-covered pretzels. But you could have two experiences. You could have the crisp experience and then the chocolate experience. Well, no, but they're no, better now, together. Now you are missing the point. I'm joining Peter. They're what, better what together. They're better together. They're better I'm together. with you, Marie. Absolutely. It's the nation's two favourite snacks. She's right. They're together. Yeah, it's like having a cheese toasty and eating the cheese first. <laughs> no. Yes, it's exactly. completely different. Why is it completely different? Well, these, these are two products that were founded completely differently. They have two different markets. As Combining cheese. the two, mm. it doesn't make sense. It makes sense to a lot of people. I like crisps when I'm looking for something a bit, you know... Maria, yeah, ignore him, please. <laughs> Honestly, you better get four, in four investments or four <laughs> investment offers or I'm going to really interrogate some people in this room. <laughs> the, ups the, the thing you have got in this business is you you're standing out of the crowd. There'll be some people who will feel strongly against it and think it's for weirdos. <laughs> and then you'll th see other people who'll be so passionate for it. And that division itself, that noise, will drive sales. Yeah. So you do have a business for you. The problem I have as an investor is I sit on the other side of the, that pole where I think it's for weirdos. <laughs> so I wish you the very, very best. Well done on what you've done. But I'm going to say that I'm out. Maria, I'm not in the chocolate business. Um, but because it's in a bar, yeah. automatically you're being uh, sort of put against other bars of chocolate. Yeah. Um, and you've got a unique product. But the moment you put it into a bag like that, you're, autom you're automatically told you're too expensive. What would happen if you actually did put it into little squares with its own little wrapping in, in a little... Would that look more premium? 
It would, but I'm not sure if the product itself is classed as a premium product. Like it's more of a snack. It's your business. It's your baby. Maybe it's cons worth considering. You might find that you'll get a better price for it. It might be one of those things where after dinner, a little box comes out, you've got little flavours in there, oh, try this, try this. And then when they run out, so we must order one more of those. Unfortunately, today, it's not investable for me, and I'm out. OK, thank you. Maria. I actually think Tuca was onto something. I think he's absolutely right that you do need to look at the way it's it's Pack packaged, yeah, honestly. Agree. Yeah. Um, I know you you don't see it as a premium product, but I do see it as a novelty gifting product. Yeah. Just think about how can we maximise margin, yeah. you know, and make it look very, very different. I love what you've done, Thanks. but but I think it's a business for you. Um, but I'd be encouraged by that. We love the product. It tastes fantastic. We don't say to everybody it's a business for you. We say to some people, give up. <laughs> don't put any more money in it. But I think you've got a really nice business here. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks. And you'll make yourself some money. But I'm afraid it's not an investment, so I'm out. All right. Thank you. I'll tell you where I'm at. My big concern is just your pricing. I think unless you can come up with a format for the product, where it's not being compared to buying a bar of chocolate and a packet of yeah. crisps and you can put them in together. It's not going to work. So thank you for the offer to invest in your business, but I'm going to say I'm out. Thank you. Maria, I, I think it's bloody brilliant. Thank you. I know it's an indulgent treat and I know you shouldn't do it, but there are some days that you just go, do you know what? I'm going to have a bar of chocolate and a packet of crisps and watch something on TV. Yeah. It was only a matter of time that somebody comes out with it and you've come out with it. Um, it's really, really niche, though. This is the, the downside to your product. There's no doubt that I think people will buy it. But I think it's a considered purchase because of its price point. And I don't think that you're going to find that they're going to buy it and then when they run out, they're going to buy it again and buy it again, like you do with a packet of crisps or a bar of chocolate. So I think it's, its uniqueness is actually its potential downfall in terms of building it into a business that could really make it. After all that, you're going out? Yeah, because I would still buy it. It's just not an investment. So for that reason, I'm out, really sadly. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so Thank much, Maria. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks. Maria. <sighs> the mortal merging entrepreneur may have gained an enthusiastic customer, but when it came to the crunch, Peter Jones wasn't willing to part with his cash. I did really think that Peter might have invested but they gave me some incredible advice that's invaluable, so I'll definitely be going away and thinking about what they've said. Do you actually think that tastes good? Yes, yeah. genuinely like chocolate? that. Yeah, yeah. I genuinely, genuinely like that. I'm going to eat Just, that. Where's my chocolate? I took Peter's away because he was going to make himself sick. You've eaten half the pack of each. That's true. In five minutes. Okay. I do. Can, I, can we have a break? I do feel a bit greasy. <laughs> <laughs> Next time on Dragon's Den. God, you can talk, can't you? I, I have a tendency to waffle. Yeah, don't waffle. All right. <laughs> it won't end well. It's condoms. Edible no. condoms. No, Deborah. Well, so you've lost a million pounds. Correct. How the other half live, eh? It's no. weird to hear your parents talking about stuff like that. <laughs> did you what did ever? He, what did he say? Uh, don't repeat it. <laughs>